if there's one relatively new music genre that's been making waves in Korean music recently, it's city pop. And right now, there's no better singer to look at than Yukika. Now, city pop bursted onto the scene in Japan in the late 70s, exploded in the 80s, and died down in the 90s when the Japanese economy crashed. Now, for people that's longtime viewers of this channel, you know that the Rise Up series covers groups in K-pop. But I just didn't want to cover mainstream groups. I wanted to cover indie groups or lesser known acts or lesser known genres. And that's what we're going to do today with this video, The Rise of Yukika. Now, in Yukika's case, she would come from Japan, then transition to becoming a K-pop star. She's a relative newcomer in K-pop where not many people know of her. But you know, I'm going to do my part to change that. Now, Yukika's first taste of entertainment happened when she was 13. And back in 2006, she worked as a fashion model for the magazine Nicola. From 2006 to 2009, she did the modeling thing while doing acting in the live adaptation drama Choco Mimi. From 2009 to 2012, she was known among anime fans and video game fans for doing a lot of voice acting. But in 2012, she would abruptly quit the entertainment industry to focus on her studies in university. And for four years, she would be a student and out of the limelight. But after she was done in her studies, in 2015, she was itching to get back in the entertainment industry. But it wouldn't be in her native Japan. It would be in nearby Korea. In 2016, she would make the full leap in the Korean entertainment and perhaps her biggest role in the Idol Master Korea series, which is based after the popular video game series in Japan. She would also be in a group at the time called Real Girls Project. And if you guys watched Mix 9, she was actually a contestant on that show alongside her other Real Girls Project members. She would place 34th in the end. However, when her group Real Girls Project disbanded, Yukika soon became a free agent and became a soloist and she would be in the web drama adaptation, Hello Stranger. But Yukika's big breakthrough in music would happen in February 2019 with the song Neon. And Neon definitely throws back in the Japanese city pop as you're seeing in this music video here. Rather than going to mainstream K-pop, Yukika embraced the Japanese city pop genre and just went full in. And this would make her prime audience into the older audiences, the mid-20s, the 30s, the 40s, and people that lived through Japanese city pop in the 1980s. Or of course, if you're one of those people that explores outside of the K-pop mainstream, then yeah, you'll probably like Yukika's music and her Japanese city pop feel. Her July 2019 song, Cherry Jubilees, would also show a Japanese city pop feel, showing that she'll probably be in the genre for the foreseeable future. Now, the future of Yukika as a soloist is hard to predict, as she's still quite new into the Korean entertainment industry. While she's a bit on the older side when it comes to Korean music, as she's 26, being born in 1993, I think having a more mature audience could help her in the long run. And it really makes her stand out as one of the few city pop singers in K-pop these days. One of the only other ones being Becky Arin of 15 and. All in all, I'd like to see where Yukika takes a city pop genre in the near future. Well guys, I'd like to know your thoughts on this video. And if you guys like this stuff, I'd be honored if you guys hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. And you guys know the drill. If you guys like real talk on K-pop, then please sign up for my email list and grab my free ebook below. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy, guys.